All right, so in this problem, I have four to the power of x plus six to the power of x is equal to nine to the power of x. So to solve this, I'm gonna divide both sides by four to the power of x. So I get four to the power of x over four to the power of x plus six to the power of x over four to the power of x is equal to nine to the power of x over four to the power of x. Now, 4 to the power of x and 4 to the power of x cancel out, so I get 1 plus 6 to the power of x over 4 to the power of x is equal to 9 to the power of x over 4 to the power of x. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m over b to the power of m, this is equal to a over b to the power of m. So in this case, 6 to the power of x over 4 to the power of x is going to equal 6 over 4 to the power of x. And 9 to the power of x over 4 to the power of x is going to equal 9, to the, 9 over 4 to the power of x. Now I can simplify these fractions. So 6 over 4 is equal to 3 over 2. And 9 over 4, I'm going to rewrite as 3 squared over 2 squared. And I can actually use this property again for 3 squared over 2 squared. So that's going to equal 3 over 2 squared to the power of x. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of n to the power of m. So this can equal 1 plus 3 over 2 to the power of x, which is equal to 3 over 2 to the power of x to the power of 2. Now, I'm going to let 3 over 2 to the power of x equal to the variable y. So I get 1 plus y is equal to y squared. And if I subtract y minus 1 on both sides, these four cancel out, and I get y squared minus y minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, to solve this equation, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is negative 1, and c is negative 1. So I get y is equal to negative of negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 1, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. Now this is equal to positive 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4 over 2 which is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. So y is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. However, we're not done yet because we're not solving for y, we're solving for x. And remember how we let 3 over 2 to the power of x equal to y. So this gives me two equations. I have 3 over 2 to the power of x is equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, as well as... 3 over 2 to the power of x is equal to 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. Now, to actually start, we can already cancel out one of these equations, which is the right-hand one, because 1 minus the square root of 5 is going to be a negative number, and you can't take the power of a positive number and make it equal to a negative number. So this equation wouldn't even work. So the only equation I have left is 3 over 2 to the power of x is equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. And to solve this, I'm going to take the log on both sides. So I have log 3 over 2 to the power of x is equal to log 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. So now this turns into x times log 3 over 2 is equal to log 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. And now if I divide both sides by log 3 over 2, I get x is equal to log 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 over log 3 over 2.
All right, so in this problem, I have three to the power of x to the power of three over nine to the power of x is equal to 81. So I'm gonna first rewrite nine to the power of x as three squared to the power of x, and then rewrite 81 as three to the power of four. Now, this is the same thing as three to the power of x to the power of three minus two x is equal to three to the power of four because three to the power of two to the power of x that's gonna equal three to the power of two x. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, then this means that m is equal to n. So in this case x to the power of three minus two x is equal to four, meaning x to the power of three minus two x minus four is equal to zero. So now to solve this, we actually have to find one solution of x before, so we can use that solution to find the other solutions of x. And we actually have to just keep on plugging in numbers until we find a solution. So if you actually plug in two, you get that x equals, or sorry, that the solution equals zero. So x equals two is one solution of x. And now using the solution, we can find the rest of the solutions by doing long division. x minus two, equals zero is a solution. So meaning we have to divide this by our original equation. So we have x, x to the power of three minus two x minus four divided by x minus two. And if you do this, you end up getting x minus two times x squared plus two x plus two is equal to zero. Now this gives me two equations. I have x minus two is equal to zero, and I have x squared plus two x plus two is equal to zero. So for x minus two equals zero, x is obviously equal to two. And for x squared plus two x plus two equals zero, I can use the quadratic formula. So I get x is equal to negative two plus or minus the square root of two squared, which is four, minus four times a, which is one, times c, which is two, all over two a. This is equal to negative two plus or minus the square root of negative four over two, which is equal to negative two plus or minus two i over two, which is equal to negative one plus or minus i. So these are my three solutions to this problem. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of four is equal to 16. So I'm gonna first start by subtracting 16 on both sides. So then these two cancel out and I'm left with x to the power of four minus 16 is equal to zero. Now x to the power of four, I'm gonna rewrite as x to the power of two times two and if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of two times two, I can rewrite that as x to the power of two to the power of two minus 16, I'm gonna rewrite as four to the power of two, which is equal to zero. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is x squared and b is four. So now I have x squared plus four times x squared minus four is equal to zero. Now, this is gonna give me two equations. I have x squared plus four is equal to zero, and I have x squared minus four is equal to zero. So x squared plus four equals zero. I can actually subtract four on both sides, and I have x squared minus four, or sorry, x squared is equal to negative four. 
Now for x squared minus 4 equals 0, I can add 4 on both sides, and I get x squared is equal to positive 4. Now for x squared equals positive 4, this is pretty simple. We just take the square root on both sides. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4, that's going to equal positive or negative 2. Now for x squared is equal to negative 4, I'm going to start by doing the same thing. I have the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of negative 4. However, the square root of negative 4, I'm going to rewrite that as the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. And if you guys already didn't know, the square root of negative 1 is equal to the imaginary number i. So I have this square root of 4 times i. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4 is positive or negative 2. So I have x is equal to positive or negative 2i, and x is equal to positive or negative 2. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 3x squared is equal to 216. So I'm going to first start by rewriting this as x to the power of 3 to the power of x squared is equal to 216. And now I'm going to switch the order of 3 and x squared. So this is the same thing as x to the power of x squared to the power of 3 is equal to 216. I'm going to rewrite as 6 to the power of 3. Now these two 3's can simply cancel out. So now I have x to the power of x squared is equal to 6. Now I'm going to take the power of 2 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x squared to the power of 2 is equal to 6 squared. And I'm going to switch these two places. So now I have x squared to the power of x squared is equal to 6 squared. And now I can let x squared equal to the variable y. So now I have y to the power of y is equal to 6 squared. And 6 squared that's the same thing as 36. So now I have y to the power of y is equal to 36. Now if I take the ln on both sides, I get ln y to the power of y is equal to ln 36. And now if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent of b to the front. So that's going to equal b times ln a. So in this case, I can move y to the front. front. So now I have y times ln y is equal to ln 36. Now y is the same thing as e to the power of ln of y because the e and ln cancel out. So I'm going to replace y with e to the power of ln y. So now I have e to the power of ln y times ln y is equal to ln 36. Now, I'm going to take the W Lambert function on both sides. So I have the W of ln y times e to the power of ln y is equal to W of ln 36. And this results in e to the power of ln y equaling e to the power of w of ln 36. And remember how we let y equal to x squared. So now I have x squared is equal to e to the power of w of ln 36. And if I take the square root on both sides, I get x is equal to the square root of e to the power of w of ln 36. And this is plus or minus.